I I love a good romantic comedy. That's probably that's one of my favourite sort of things is to sit down and watch a good rom com. I think it's when I'm at my happiest as a kind of film goer. So I'm gonna uh, well, ask you guys what you what it is you think that makes a great romantic comedy, and in particular what it was about French Girl that really kind of tapped into what makes this genre so kind of appealing to to audiences. And I'll start with you, Zach. Well, I think, you know, it all comes down to a great story, right? You, you know, people, all, genres come and go and fads come and go and, and, and the rom-com is having a resurgence, I believe. And uh, it just comes down to a great story. And I think the guys, you know, James and Nick who wrote this, they found a unique angle um, and, they, and they found a good touchstone. You know, we were always saying like in the spirit of a Meet the Parents movie, which is just a, a, a movie that I happen to really love. So in that funny tone where like a poor guy, everything he's trying to do goes wrong, but he has such good intentions. Um, I just love that, that world. And I think if you have a killer script and a unique angle, um, which, which they did with, with, with this particular love triangle, and of course, setting it in French Canada, which is not something I've seen before. Um, I just thought all of it was, was unique. And um, I think audiences, you know, if the script is good, if, the, if it's executed well, they're in. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, I, I, obviously the rom-com is, is not dead and is having quite a resurgence. Yeah. yeah and Evelyn, I mean, obviously you mentioned it was sort of shot in sort of French Canada. Obviously that's, uh, I think it was your sort of, Quebec is your sort of hometown. Did you sort of just have to feel obliged or responsibility to take the likes of Zach and Vanessa out to sort of show them the, the sites of, of the local area? Well, they took it in. I didn't have to twist their hand. They were so they were they were in the city. They were in theme parks. They were in restaurants. We uh, it was really enjoyable. I think the movie is a celebration of um, the French woman, but the French family as well. There's a lot of um, of love for those archetypes that are very, I think, well and vibrantly um, put to life on screen. And um, I think that's, uh, in a way, it's also a way to, I, I didn't have to only show them the city, I kind of show them uh, what we're about and our soul. And I think it's carried in the movie, but it also happened on set, just the, how, how lovingly we all embrace each other and, and yeah, had a wonderful time. Yeah, Vanessa, is that one of the kind of perks of this job? I guess you're kind of constantly traveling and seeing new places and getting to know areas that, I mean, I, as a as a sort of tourist, I might go and sort of stay somewhere for a few days here and there, but you might be in a sort of city or a, or a nation for kind of, you know, two months at a time. Is that one of the things you really enjoy about your, your career? Amongst the many other things, yeah, it's definitely a major perk. There's nothing better than going to a city with a local and being able to really submerge yourself into the culture and that environment and be able to see the local shops and restaurants and like hear the music and just really be submerged into a different culture. I think that's that's the most exciting thing about traveling and to be able to do that with my job, something I love doing so much is just the ultimate bonus. And it's like, it's interesting you mentioned Meet the Parents, because one of my favourite romantic comedy tropes is the kind of meeting of the kind of partner's family and the kind of ability to constantly make mistakes. And I mean, I remember when I first met my wife's family 15, 18 years ago uh, at her house, and I ended up drinking her, like, that, my father-in-law's, my soon-to-be father-in-law's uh, best whiskey by accident. I didn't even realise it. So it's little things like that. And I just wondered, going back to you guys all kind of, you know, with, be it sort of boyfriends or girlfriends you've had across your life, were you always good at playing it cool? Were you were you quite calm in those situations oh i remember so many cringy moments where i said the wrong thing or i i you know oh don't why did you bring up my dad's sister i was like i was just asking questions you know i think you're always you know you're so nervous to meet the family um and, you, you know and you're always trying to say the right thing but i definitely have had memories where or experiences where i stumbled into saying something stupid but of course this is a heightened reality and no matter what gordon does he just constantly no matter how hard he tries he's constantly screwing up which i just think is 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 really funny and and i think audiences are going to really enjoy watching all the cringy things he does yeah how about you guys I think everyone's a Gordon. I, I think we always um, try too hard when we want to be loved. But I think also, in a way, everyone has a journey that kind of could be similar to Sophie's, whereas when, you, uh, when you're when you passionate and ambitious, kind of a chef's table thing where you just go to another city and prove to yourself that you can do the big thing that everybody thinks is cool. But it's actually when you go back to yourself and your essence that your genius sort of pops out. It's when you 
play with the ingredients that you know and with your memories. And I think that's uh, like something that's hidden in the movie that I, I, I really think people can identify with as well. I've always been great with parents, so I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> um, Gordon gives it a good old go. And I, obviously, I love the scene, obviously, you know, getting chased by a swan. I, I've actually got a bit of a phobia of swans. I don't, I find them aggressive and a bit scary. I, I wonder if any of you have got any kind of phobias of anything you're quite scared of, even some of the more surprising ones, because my old flatmate was scared of baked beans. It's interesting. Mm. Actual phobia. Oh, my worst one is the uh, nail scratching on the chalkboard. Sometimes I keep up at night. Um, there's a scene in Jaws where the where someone scratches. Oh, I'm thinking about it now. That's my biggest one. But beans, I'm okay with. I guess heights, but that's pretty like rational. I think like if I'm on the top of a very tall building, I'm stuck against the walls. But you love roller. Coasters. But I love me a roller coaster. <laughs> I can't drive. That's my thing. I I learned too late. I was like kind of a walker and a bus taker. And then I, I took my license because the director was like, you'll never play a police lady. You, you got to take. So I took it too late. It took me three times to pass it. I still can't drive to this day. I drive on sets like between action and cut and that's it. But it's not that interesting or quirky. <laughs> I put, you know, to, food's a big part of this of this story in a kind of roundabout way obviously you'd with the kind of characters sort of working in restaurants but even at the beginning with kind of gordon cooking a semi sort of eatable uh eggs sort of benedict <laughs> but are you are you guys do you do any of you have a kind of passion for cooking and what's your kind of signature dish if so pale banana it's a banana bread <laughs> i make it for my kids they love it yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm not the best chef. I just cooking kind of stresses me out, so I can do it. I just choose not to that often. <laughs> oh, but so I'm like Gordon in the beginning of the movie. That's what I would make for breakfast. <laughs> I thought Gordon's such a kind of lovely, nice bloke and just such a really sensitive soul of a good heart. I think he really represents the kind of goodness in a lot of the viewers watching it. So I want to know is what don't you like about him? I think to truly appreciate the goodness in someone, we must also establish their flaws. So Zach, what is it about, what is it about Gordon you think makes him a kind of well-rounded human, I suppose? Because he's not, not everyone is kind of inherently perfect. Well, he's incredibly insecure. I mean, I think a lot of people relate to that. I mean, he... He's, it, and, and, you know, he has uh, some, some of it's justified, you know, Vanessa's character is, is, is moving in on his, on his love. And, but I think that a lot of the choices he makes um, are, are, are come from a real place of, of insecurity. And, and, um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think that's very relatable to a lot of people, but I think it's one of his biggest downfalls. Yeah, because and, and everyone, I'll come to you next. Because I mean, not to get sort of too deep, but the film does look into the kind of notion of kind of compromise and making major sacrifices for a relationship in the way kind of Gordon follows Sophie to Canada, which is a really kind of relatable age old issue. The kind of notion of give and take and finding a kind of happy medium It's quite rare. I feel like I haven't seen much of it on screen though. Was it quite interesting to kind of see that sort of like sort of through this movie? Because it feels like a very relatable film that is sort of untapped a little bit in cinema. Usually, it's the it's the girl that follows the guy. So that made it super cool for me. She has a journey. She has a job. She's in the middle of two people who are, you know, fighting for her. So I think that I, that's what those movies are, are interesting. Like if you take a, a rom-com, what's really interesting is how is this one going to be different? And and I think that's one of the things that makes our rom-com super special. And that made me love it even more. My, my final question, I'll come to you, Vanessa, because I saw you on the Oscars red carpet. Congratulations, by the way. But I wanted to ask the first person I've spoken to since the ceremony who attended, how was it seeing I'm Just Ken perform live? Because it was so good on the telly. <laughs> of course, I was the person who, like, actually wasn't there. <laughs> I did the carpet. I did my job. And <laughs> I kind of get out of there. <laughs> but it was so special. I mean, like, I am obviously such a massive musical theater nerd. Um, and whenever there is a live performance, I, I think that a certain magic comes about and over takes the theater and I feel like it definitely did in that scenario and it was just really wonderful seeing him in all of his Ken glory <laughs> I've been singing that song for about six months so it's, it's just come back <laughs> in 
Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, guys. Best of luck with the release of the film. Cheers. Thank Take you. Care. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, hey you guys. <laughs> hey you guys. <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys. Hey.